This micro lecture reviews uh, characteristics and growth requirements of trees. Since uh, trees are the basic units in the forest, it's important to know some of the terminology uh, related to them and how trees uh, are, are affected by environmental processes and some requirements of trees. And that uh, basically sums up the definition of silvics. Which is also the which is the study of tree growth requirements, processes in the environment. Uh, dendrology is the actual study and identification of individual trees by species. And um, when we talk about trees, trees are divided in, into two groups: your angiosperms, which uh, include palms and uh, broadleaf trees; your monocots and dicots. Um, all angiosperms have encased seeds, as you can see the the tree on the right there, the coco de mer is the uh, largest uh, seed in the world. Gymnosperms, or your pines typically, are called that. They uh, have naked seeds. Uh, they're soft woods. They include the conifers, your evergreens, uh, such as your pines, firs, spruces, and cypresses. You can see a ginkgo down there on the left, a uh, pine cone with those naked seeds in the middle. And the photo on the right is a picture of a sugar pine, or Pinus lambertiana, which produces one of the largest cones of the pines. Um, the pines, your gymnosperms, uh, have uh, needles typically for leaves or scales. They also produce cones or fleshy fruits. Getting into the different parts of a tree, and there are resources um, in uh, Blackboard that go over some of these parts as well. You know, a tree basically consists of three parts. The crown, the bowl, which is also or more commonly known as the trunk, and the root system. And the crown really plays an important role in filtering dust and other particles from the air, as well as kind of holding the leaves that are involved with uh, photosynthesis, uh, producing the food for, for the tree. Uh, the crown also helps cool the air, provides shade, and uh, reduces the impact of, of raindrops on the soil below. If you were to cut into a tree or get into a cross section of a tree, you would see uh, five major layers. The outer bark is the tree's protection from the outside world. Uh, the inner bark, which is also called the phloem, is the pipeline through which food is passed to the rest of the tree. And the way to remember these, uh, or the difference between phloem and xylem, is that uh, phloem controls food and xylem controls water. So remember the phloem food uh, little analogy there. Um, but that inner bark or phloem lives only for a short time and then turns to cork, which becomes part of the protective outer bark. Uh, the cambium is the actual part of the tree trunk that is growing, and it's constantly producing new bark and new wood. Uh, hormones called auxins control this growth and stimulate cell growth, and these auxins are produced by the leaf buds at the end of branches. Uh, sapwood is made up of xylem, and again, xylem is uh, responsible for water transport in the tree. So remember that again. Um, phloem is responsible for food, or the starches, and xylem is responsible for water transfer. And then, of course, the last layer is the heartwood, which is kind of the central supporting pillar of, of the dead uh, cells made of the hollow fibers um, bound together by lignin. And it's important to note that only the cells closest to the cambium layer are actually alive or growing. So the cambium is the, really the only living part of the, of the tree trunk or wood in the tree. Um, sapwood is the newly formed outer wood just inside of the vascular cambium and is usually lighter in color than the heartwood, which is often the part of the tree that's used for um, uh, ornamental wood design and you know, crafts and boxes and things that you see uh, in the picture on the right. Getting into more depth with the, uh, with the cross section of a tree, that xylem includes three types of cells. There are lots of uh, tubular conductive cells, similar to what you see there uh, in a celery stalk. But you also have sheets of ray cells, which are tubes running from the inner bark towards the center of the tree. Uh, the third type of cell is, is called uh, parenchyma, and those are the starch holding cells uh, within a tree. And that's uh, those parenchyma store starches, which are reconverted to sugar to be used um, used by the tree for uh, for repair and for energy. Here's a, again another cross section of an angiosperm or a hardwood, where you can see some of those cells. Uh, you can see the xylem layer and the phloem layer and the corky bark layer. Um, 
in comparison, if you look at the cross-section of a gymnosperm, there's a couple of features specific to pines or gymnosperms that you'll see. Um, pines tend to have resin ducts uh, that, uh, you know, towards the, um, uh, towards the bark, and that serves an important, um, important role in uh, nutrient transfer and, and water transfer, but it also uh, forms a protective layer when boring insects get into, uh, get into a pine tree. Um, sap quickly fills up the hole and kind of serves as um, uh, to keep to keep the bad stuff out. Tracheids and vessel elements are two types of water conducting cells that you find in xylem tissue. Um, generally, most of your cone bearing gymnosperm trees, like your pines, do not have vessels. They have these very narrow uh, um, tracheid vessels, which when uh, arborists try to inject chemicals or fertilizers into uh, gymnosperms, they don't the, the the chemicals or whatever they're injecting don't move up as quickly as they would in a hardwood that uh, that has vessels because uh, gymnosperms only have what are called tracheids. Roots are the anchor of the tree. They serve the structural serve for structural stability for a tree and are also responsible for nutrient supply. Um, often roots uh, have uh, associated are associated with mycorrhizal funga or fungi that actually attach themselves to the root hairs of roots and uh, uh, convert nitrogen into a form that's usable by the tree. It's sort of a symbiotic relationship there. There's two major types of root systems. A taproot system, which you're aware of, when, when one single strong root uh, goes into the ground to set up shop for the tree, and then a fibrous root system uh, is concentrated uh, typically close to the surface. Roots serve a number of purposes for the tree. Uh, and here just listed a few of those purposes. Um, they contribute to soil organic matter. Uh, they store nutrients for future use. They can change pH. Uh, they can even poison competitors, which is I'll get and show that slide in a second. Uh, they absorb uh, water. They support plants, and they keep uh, keep kind of the balance um, of, of water and nutrients in the soil. There are a number of site factors that influence tree growth, especially light, and uh, that's at a very local or micro level, but also regionally. And light, of course, has to do um, with uh, the growing season, um, you know, l shorter days in the, in the winter. As you, as, you go farther, uh, as you go farther south, temperature picks up. Um, moisture changes, moisture regimes are, are different throughout, or as you go uh, uh, longitudinally uh, or latitudinally um, across the globe, you get different rainfall levels. There's different drainage patterns that also influence tri uh, tree growth. Uh, differences in soil pH, differences in soil fertility, the depth of soil, the types of soil that exist are all factors that influence uh, tree growth. A couple of definitions also to pay attention to are shade tolerance and intolerance. You'll hear that used uh, more frequently as we go, um, as we touch on other uh, on other modules, and that's just the capacity of trees to reproduce and grow in in the shade uh, in the shade of and in competition with other trees. So trees that grow are able to grow in the shade are considered shade tolerant. Um, trees that love the sun or have to be in the sun um, are called shade intolerant. Uh, apical meristem, you'll hear that, th that term used, and that's the actual growing point at the tip of, of uh, a root or the tip of a stem, and that's the beginning point of any of the primary tissues that we spoke about earlier. Sometimes you see trees with uh, what is called epicormic growth, and that's, um, that are, those are outgrowths of, of shoots that occur after the, after the apical bud or growing bud is damaged. Um, some trees are able to send out um, other shoots uh, to compensate, and that's called epicormic growth. And side indicator species are combinations or groups of plants that you typically find in, in association with forest types. If you walk into, um, if you walk into uh, a wetland area, for example, into a wetland forest, there are certain uh, plant species that you'd expect to find in that wetland that are different from species that you would find in a more upland or dry site. So those uh, other species can indicate what type of forest that you're in as well. And speaking of uh, the function of roots or a function of, uh, of, uh, of trees or branches that uh, can cause damage or, or toxins to other, to other plants, um, the term 
uh, for the suppression of the growth of one plant species by another by releasing toxic substances is called allelopathy. And uh, allelopathy has been defined as either a harmful or even beneficial effect of one plant on another through the production of chemical compounds escaping into the environment. Uh, black walnut locally is a species that has allelopathic properties. Next time you, you're around a, an old field and notice a black walnut, see what you can find growing under a black walnut. There's not much there. This picture on the, on the left shows a uh, plantation of, um, of an, what's called Australian pine, and you, as you can see, there's nothing else growing under it. That would be considered an allelopathic effect.